Welcome everyone, I'm Laura DeFranco, the CEO of Brave Healer Productions, where we have a mission to wake the world up to what's possible, one brave word at a time. And here today to help me with that mission are some of the amazing authors of a new book that we have coming out. It's called The Ultimate Guide to Becoming a Successful Soul Professional, 22 Powerful Growth Strategies for Up-Leveling Your Soul-Aligned Business. Oh my goodness, that title. Um, I cannot wait to introduce these authors to you today, but first let me just give our lead author, Camille Miller, a big thank you. Camille is the founder of the Natural Life Business Partnership and the really the pioneer of the soul professional movement. And we're gonna talk a bit, a, a bit about that today. Camille, thank you so much for the mission you had for this book, for bringing this stellar group of master teachers together. Um, just wait till you hear what they all have to say about these topics, you guys. Um, all right, who do I have with me? Dr. Suzanne Joy Stewart is the CEO and naturopath for Naturally Balanced Health and a soul counselor at Dolphin Angel Wings, where she provides the body, mind, heart, and soul solutions and guidance to prevent, reverse, and cure health and wellness. India Clark is with me. She's the founder and CEO of Resilient Wings, where she provides anxiety and trauma therapy, trauma-informed mindset and resilience coaching for career women and organizational mental health training and consulting. And a Illuminate Life founder and CEO, Dr. Liz Lehman is here with us. Um, Let's see, she took 25 years of experience in medicine and applied the holistic healing principles of essential oils and crystals to create a luxurious collection of aromatherapy products. Mm, all right, we're gonna ask her about that in a minute. So let's start this party off with Suzanne. Suzanne, tell us a little bit about your chapter. Okay, well, I've written chapter five for everybody to advance their growth and the title of the chapter is your souls believe your souls challenges and rewards discover the remarkable power within you and this this chapter focuses in on a real passion of mine helping people become more aware of how they can turn their life around by the way they speak by what they do what they believe and for me, I was able to ascertain quite a bit of information with my time that I spent my summers on the Indian reservation up in South Dakota. And it really opened up a tremendous wealth of awareness of how we can actually improve ourselves so quickly in a positive way. And this is what I'm sharing with everybody, even beyond this book, to help people see the light and have a better life. I would imagine that particular experience was profound for you and shifted maybe everything you do. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about spending time on the reservation? Oh, sure. Well, I, I am a, a shaman and I usually do my my prayers for Mother Earth, Maka Ona. And I spent a lot of time doing a lot of the sweat lodges, which are called Yumipi Tupis. And that's a place where you pray and you give thanks for whatever is on your mind at that point. And I was experiencing a lot of Indian spirits coming to me. A lot of things opened up for me. And because I have an open mind to begin with and very far from thinking about fear and what's that, I became very curious. And so, yes, it was one thing after another that was just catapulting me and literally exploding, explodes, ex that's a new word, exploding. <laughs> <laughs> I like a good that. One. Um, yeah, ex uh, what I can do beyond. I mean, when I came to one of the shamans there and told them some of the messages I got, he looked at me like, well, you're just a, a white person. What do you know? You know, and it just kept coming. And I just loved sharing everything that I possibly can with people so they can have a better life. So for me, it was, it was enlightening, definitely enlightening. So for people who aren't 
familiar or as familiar with the term shaman, how would you describe what and how you practice in terms of that title? Well, a shaman is, is a little bit different than just a medicine man, okay? It's taking it into the soul, the spiritual energy of the being or, or any living creature, animal, plant, okay? Because the term matapuyasi means all my relations. So as a shaman, you're working with all our relations, be them animal, plant, or human, or maybe even extraterrestrial. So it, it comes into play that once you really focus in away from yourself, but tuning into the universe, tuning into Wankantanka, the great spirit God, you can understand how to help other people, whether it's in healing, which is a, 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 a career of mine, and also for anybody, anybody can become a shaman when they start focusing in on the healing of the body, mind, heart, and soul, it's, it's just another title, like a guru would be a teacher, okay? And yet some people, and it's a higher level teacher, of course. So a shaman for me is an individual who has the abilities and the desire to reach out and help Mother Earth and all that lives on Mother Earth. Thank you. Thanks for explaining that. And thank you for being here, Suzanne. Thank you. India, you're up next. Tell us about your amazing chapter. Absolutely. So I am chapter three, and my chapter is titled as Leveraging Life's Detours, How to Reclaim Your Power and Set a um, Course for Success. So my chapter, um, I, so I'm a licensed clinical social worker, um, like you had mentioned. So I do anxiety and trauma therapy, and I also do the mindset coaching. And I really wanted to convey to people why I've been so connected to working with women um, and people in general, but helping people through really big life detours and change and opposition. Um, I've always just been fascinated about how our mindset and our identity can just change in the course of so many things happening and that evolution of who we are. Um, and the biggest thing that I learned from a small age is like how some of these things, they can really steal your hope and your joy for life. And so I've always wanted people to know there are tools that we can use to be able to be hopeful, but also to still be powerful again, that we can still live our life again and still experience success no matter what our journey um, has brought to us. So this has been my reiteration of what I've gone through as a mother, as a career woman, and even as, as an entrepreneur. I've always loved redefining the word detour or, or thinking about change in a different way. Like, you know, typically you'd think detour is like, well, it's, it's pulling you around in a different direction. But I actually think that the universe puts things there purposefully. So it's actually a more direct path. So yeah, talk more about that. How do you think about it the same way? I completely do. And you've probably heard like when people use the kind of the analogy of like the GPS system of like, you get that detour, you hit some, you know, traffic and there you're still getting there. Um, and I like to believe that as you said, like the embracing change, that this there's more in this journey than the destination. And that was something I was totally the opposite. I'm always, I was always that person that was saying like, I have to get here. And it would make me lose sight of like all the things that I've gained on the journey, whether that was the skills or the tool set or the people that I've gained the support systems. And so that is what I've loved helping people to have the mindset around is like, okay, you still want to be here. And if you knew that nothing in this journey was going to keep you from your destiny or from your heart's desire, how can you embrace what's in front of you and literally use it as a stepping stone? So I think me doing that and helping other people to do that, it really shows you how you are still in a very powerful position. It's almost just adjusting how you see things and taking in what's being brought to you as a gift and something that is still going to be usable somewhere and sometime. So I'm going to take this one step further and play devil's advocate and say, but India, what about mm -hmm. the really horrible things? So oh when you tell people, yeah. Even the horrible things, there is something that you can harvest through that. And I always say, because I, I would have a lot of people say like, you're in resilience work, that's just pushing people to make something awesome out of the, the, the ugly. But what to me, there is a power in being able to say like, now this is not something that's held over my head. This is something that I can actually say like, 
I am not going to be stunted by this. My journey does not stop here. This is one chapter in my bigger picture. And so really remembering that of like, even though, you know, the ugly, the bitter things might happen along the way, your journey doesn't have to end there. And how powerful is it for you to choose to say like, I'm not letting my journey in here. I've got way too much more to accomplish. I've got gifts that the world hasn't seen yet. There are people and places that I want to be able to go and venture out to. So that is what I would say to that. <laughs> I love it. Thank you, India. Thank you for being here today. All right, Liz, tell us everything about your chapter. <laughs> well, not everything. <laughs> Only the important details. Thank you, first of all, Laura, Camille, for making all this happen so that you gave us a platform to share from our experiences and help others. So I think that's great. I am chapter 18, um, the essential wellness prescription. And it's a simple self-care strategy for busy entrepreneurs. Um, being an anesthesiologist for over 20 years, I lived a very structured life. You had your scheduled shifts, you had your responsibilities. It was very much a task goal oriented job, which spilled over into life. When I became an entrepreneur, all of that really went to crap. And so in that space of never knowing what's happening next and the stress of running your own business and issues with supply chain and production and customers, it became very overwhelming. And there was not that, you know, check a box, go to the next thing space at all. So one holiday season when I was still very much the solopreneur scaling a kitchen experiment into a business, I was waking up at three in the morning to make candles, to fill orders, to generate invoices, to order more supplies. I could feel the stress and anxiety just coming off my body. And I knew if I didn't do something, I would, my body was going to shut down. And so I had to establish certain steps to balance my well-being. And I took those steps and essentially wanted to make a guide for other entrepreneurs, just little things you can do to make your overall health and well-being so much better as you navigate your day, your business. And I love that so much, mostly because you know, if you're not careful, the universe kind of reminds you that this vessel that you're walking around in is the most important priority of everything, including your own everything in your life and your business, right? Taking care of yourself so that you can give from, from an overflow and not burn yourself out. What, what else do you want us to know about that? Oh, gosh, it's so it, you hear it all the time. It's the, you know, take care of you before you can take care of anybody else. The oxygen mask, you know, fill your cup. All of those um, cliches and self-care as a term, it gets kind of uh, diluted in all the noise, I guess you could say. You really need to do and find a, a, a way to incorporate some things every day to make you feel better. And it's not just a one and done. It is an everyday kind of mentality. It's in incorporating certain practices. For me personally, the game changer was meditation. I was too busy. I didn't have time for that nonsense. I had candles to make, you know, at 3 a.m. Wrong. You have to make taking care of you a priority. And it can be just little things like meditating, you know, eating right and exercise, sure but it doesn't have to be hours in the gym or worth a trainer. It's just escaping even your desk and doing like a little quick snack of movement, hundred jumping jacks in the corner to reset your mind and make your body feel better and give you the mental ability and the physical strength to make it through your day. You're making me think about just even a moment with my morning coffee. If I really slow down and take a breath and smell it first, that's a moment of meditation for me. 
meditation, the big M word doesn't have to be so scary, you guys, it can be just a moment where you're mindful of what you taste or smell and then you even just add that feeling of gratitude inside for that yummy dark roast espresso if you're in my kitchen okay so absolutely um, i agree 100 yes. yeah and then it doesn't have to be so overwhelming like how i'm going to fit this whatever this is into my life right it's any moment of your life you can put it in there mm-hmm. um india what does it mean to you to be a soul professional Oh my gosh, a soul professional to me is someone who they're really connected with themselves and they're helping other people to stay connected to themselves, their power, their purpose, this life that, this life that they live um, as a, a way of being. Oh, that was a perfect way to kick that question off. Um, I love it. All right, Liz, how are you going to answer that? What does it mean to you to be a soul professional? India had the best answer. (laughs) She did have a good answer. (laughs) So good. Um, It really is about alignment in in all things in life, because I really do feel how you do one thing is how you do everything. So it's not just about your professional life. It's incorporating that into your relationships with friends and family um and how you value all of those just and again just being in integrity with all of it it all comes together yes definitely so thank you to for adding this i love it's hard suzanne to go last on the question right but i love listening to how you're adding to each other's answers um what's your version suzanne What does it mean? And unmute yourself uh, so that we can hear you, okay? (laughs) I believe that the key word here too, besides alignment, is balance. Having that balance and of awareness within ourselves that it's not just the I, it's our soul. It's the connection that we have with God, with the universe, with the angels, with all that is important to each individual so they can literally become aware of themselves as both a soul, a human being with the soul, but that the soul is guiding us all the time. And when we listen, we then are able to completely ascertain and be more in balance and becoming stronger as a soul entity, because that's what matters in our life. The soul guides us on this journey, journey, and that's important to become aware of. It's the ego id that takes us off, and we have to be more focused into ourselves by quieting down the mind through meditation or even fishing or whatever somebody's doing to help keep that quiet, even smelling the coffee, yes, taking the time, eating quietly. All of these tools are a form of meditation. You don't have to just sit there. So opening up yourself to be to really listening to the messages from your soul is going to take you further into being a soul professional on all aspects of your life. Mm, I love how all of you answered that question. I, I haven't done this before. I'm going to ask our viewers today, what does it mean to you? Come into the comments under the video. Tell us what else you would say about what it means to you to be a soul professional. Um, I love hearing all of the ways that you powerful women answered that question. And I want to just take a moment to say thank you to all three of you for not just for saying yes to this project, but for taking the challenge I gave you to step up and put your heart and souls onto those pages and then continue by sharing master teachings you all have lived a lifetime of practice and you're we're we're putting these nuggets into the book practical strategies that you all can use and i really think you all are quite amazing for the way that you did that liz i want to ask you this next one um first i really think that it takes a certain something to go from starting that soul aligned business 
to becoming successful in that business. And I want to know what you think is the most important thing about creating that success. You are all going to have a different definition of the success, but a lot of business owners would like to get to the next level of growth in that business. They want to know what it takes to bump from here to there. What do you think? Okay. I'm going to steal a quote from Abraham Lincoln. Borrow. I credited him. <laughs> um, success consists of moving from failure to failure without a loss of enthusiasm. <laughs> I haven't heard that one before. That's a good one. Yeah. And for me, it, to be successful, you need to have that enthusiasm. You need to have the joy. You really need to believe that everything is possible um, and trust the path. I wake up regardless of the challenges that the day may present as a business owner, but I wake up in such joy that I have and gratitude that I have the opportunity to be in this space to create products that I believe in to get feedback from customers, to educate people, and just to share from my experience that everything is possible. You can blow up one career and start another one if it brings you joy. And if you're not in joy, you're not in alignment, you need to look at where you are and figure out where you want to be. Really, really great start to that question. Thank you. I love that quote from failure to failure without a loss of enthusiasm, right? Did I get that right? Yeah, I love that. Enthusiasm is a big deal to me. I love the word because it conjures a feeling in me. And it's it's beyond just like being cool with something, right? Like when you're enthusiastic, it's kind of like shifting from happy to the word ecstatic. It's yeah, just got a buzz. Excited. Yeah, it's tangible. You're excited. There's a spark. There's a motivation. Like everything's possible in that word, enthusiasm. Yeah. Yes, love it. Love it, love it. Okay, Suzanne, how about you? So let me re repeat it one more time. You know, you start the business, but then it's about how can I get it to over here to this next level? And I think it takes a certain something for um, entrepreneurs to make that happen. What do you think is the most important thing about that journey? Passion, <laughs> uh, passion and positive mindset, uh, always being focused or certainly being sure of being focused on understanding that if something really has lost its luster or what, what you've been doing is kind of giving its shadows and lacking the ability to move forward, that you welcome the change and look for an alternative and say, okay, what am I going to do about this? And looking for the, literally looking for the next step by putting it out to the uni universe as well as to yourself. Okay, how do I handle this? What is the next move? And those answers will come because your passion and your enthusiasm literally work together, you know, side by side when you have a great level of um, dedication to what you are doing for yourself and for others. And pe people lean on you, they, they're interested in knowing. And when you can literally find an answer to something, it doesn't matter what the answer is, but when anybody finds the answer for what they're seeking, that's what matters because what works for one may not work for the other. But there is, we, we, for me, when I, when I get into an area where I go, we need to go further, I need to connect with somebody else because they may have a different mindset and that's going to set me thinking, oh, well, maybe that's, that's, that sounds great. Yeah, let's do that, you know, rather than just utilizing my own ability. So I, I certainly will go towards others for insight as well. And I think that helps us, um, leap forward, catapult us to the next level. Really important. I like what you said also about not, not everything works for everyone. I think it's part of the mission behind our books even is that because 
I know I want to have all of your stories, your very unique voices, all of you, because the way that you told the story or the tool that you shared is exactly the way somebody's going to need to read it or receive it to be helped and not everything is for everybody and not even one strategy works for the same person the same way every single time so making sure that you're reaching out to different people and being inspired in different ways and um, not giving up on your own dream right continue to be the seeker of those answers i love that um all right india you're going to be the last one on this so what do you think is is the most important thing about moving bumping up to that next level of success on the business journey I gosh I would second so many things that have been said today one of the things that comes up for me is really having that determination and um, when Suzanne mentioned dedication, that one kind of pinged me as well. But that determination to kind of see something um, to the end of how, you know, no matter what the journey is going to bring you, what can you do to self-support yourself to keep moving? Whether that is allowing yourself to take a pause and kind of recalibrate. Sometimes we need that. Sometimes life gut punches us so hard that we do need some time to kind of gather ourselves, gather our emotions, you know, and, and maybe even grieve that like, gosh, I thought this was going to be an easy journey, but I got, you know, some some things, some stones um, thrown in my path. So really allowing yourself to kind of pause, giving yourself what you need so that you can still be dedicated and keep going. And I also just want to um, second how Liz also said, just seeing the possibilities, because for me, there's possibilities and there's allowing yourself to say like, gosh, there's so much that I can accomplish. How can I stop and smell the roses of how far I've gotten and keep going to see like there's more on the journey that it has for me. So I would say those things for success. I love it. Um, all of you, uh, thank you so much for answering that question in the ways that you did. I think it's important that people have a community um, that they can come to. And this is so much more than a book. This is a community of generous, really master teachers that you all can go to so if you heard something today that was making you curious, giving you the goosebumps, maybe you have a question, maybe you want to continue the juicy conversation, right? So um, just come on down into the show notes because I have everybody here hooked up with their websites and their links, and they are very generously there for you to take that next step on your journey. Authors, thank you so much for what you do in the world. And thank you for being here to share it with everyone. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So to our listeners today, you are invited to come to the book launch party for the ultimate guide to becoming a successful soul professional. You'll meet all of our co-authors and lead author Camille Miller there. It's going to be Friday, July 14th, 11 a.m. Eastern. I have some information down below about that as well. And if you happen to be listening to this interview anytime after that date, well, that just means you can hop over to Amazon and get your copy, copy of this beautiful, powerful, amazing book. This is the book I wished I had had in the beginning of my business journey. When I look at your all's just your tips, your awareness, your beautiful golden nuggets of wisdom in terms of business building in this book. I'm like, whoa, we are giving people such a big gift. So thank you all for being a part of that. And lastly today, just remember your words change the world when you're brave enough to share them. So it is time to be brave. See you next time, everyone. <laughs>